Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be getting into some aristocrats. Now, aristocrats are a different type of cipher that you're going to have to be able to solve on the Code Busters test. They're similar to the Caesar cipher, but the cipher text, this text in red right here, does not make a full alphabet. So here's an example of one of the tables of a completed aristocrat. And if you'll notice anything funny, the word code appears right here. Now, code is not regularly found in the English alphabet. That's just not how that works. So the code, sorry, this code, this word code is your keyword. Now, this is a special thing about some aristocrats. This is called a K1 alphabet. In a K1 alphabet, you have your regular alphabet from A to Z, but there is a keyword hidden somewhere in that alphabet. So you can see that the alphabet starts right here on M. You'll notice anything different. It goes from A to B to F. So A, B, F. That's not how the alphabet goes. But because you have a keyword right here, that is how a K1 alphabet goes. So it goes A, B, then it uses all the letters that are in your keyword. So C, D, E, then F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. And then O is used in the keyword, so it's right here. And then P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. So every letter can only be used once. So the rest of the alphabet is filled in with the gaps after the keyword. So A, B, then there's no C, D, or E right here because the keyword has C, D, and E in it. So it just keeps on going. Now let's try something. I want you guys to see if you can fill in the rest of this table using the keyword of Roland. So remember, the alphabet starts after the keyword, and every letter can only be used once. So pause the video and see if you can figure it out. All right, so because A is used in the keyword, you start your alphabet with letter B. So B, and then it's, if C is used, C is not used. So C, D is, skip D, go to E. E, F, G, and keep going until you see the next letter that is used in the keyword. So G, H, I, J, K, then L is used. So you go to M, N is used, O is used, so P, Q, R is used, S, T, U, V, and then W, X, Y, Z. So this is a completed example of a K1 alphabet. You have your keyword, which is Roland, right here, and then your rest of your alphabet starts after the keyword. So you've got your A, B, C, D in the keyword, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L in the keyword, M, N, and O in the keyword, P, Q, R right here. And then S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. So now let's try a practice problem. This, I came up with this one, and it's similar to something that you might see on your Code Busters test. So this says, decode this quote by Isaac Asimov that has been encoded using a K1 alphabet. So we know that this table right here is going to be very similar. It's not going to be the same because we don't know the keyword. It's going to be very similar to this table down here. Now they give us some more hints to help us figure it out too. It says it ends with the word knowing. So knowing right here is going to translate to these letters right here because it tells us that. And it also contains the word the three times. So things to look out for. First, we know what the last word is. So we know what all of these letters translate to right here. Second, we need to look for the word the three times. Now, because every letter translates to the same letter, or the same letter, like if A translates to C, then B will translate to another letter, but it will be the same throughout the entire question. So we need to look for three letter words like B, C, D, or E, W, B, that could translate to the word the. And there's gonna be three instances of the word the in this. So I think we should start out with the word knowing right here. So we know that knowing is the last word in this quote. So 
Now that we know this, we can fill it in. So P translates to K. This number right here means that there's only, this number right here means that there's only one K in the entire quote. So then we move to the next letter, N. S translates to N. There are seven Ns in this quote. So let's go and fill them in. S, N, right there. Number two, number three, four, five, six, and seven. Next letter is E and O. So E translates to O. There are two O's in this. There's one right here, another one right there. Next letter is W. So Y translates to W. And there's only one W in the whole thing. So we are done with the letter W. Next letter is I. N translates to I. There are seven I's throughout this puzzle, so that's fine. So there's one right there, another one right there, right here. I, 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 and then there's the last one right there. Now, if you'll notice, we've already started to be able to fill in some words. So like right here, we have in. We have two instances of the word in. And because we had the information that knowing was the last letter, we've already found a bunch of other words and letters. So let's keep on going and see what else we can find. So M translates to G. There are three G's in this puzzle. Because it says it right here. M translates to G. There's three of them. So there's one right here. Another one up oh, right here. And the third one right there. So now this is all information that we've gotten just because it was given to us. And then next step of this problem is to find which three words are the word the. So you're looking for the same pattern and maybe you've already found it by now, but B, C, D, you have that word three times. So B, C, D right here, B, C, D right here, B, C, D right here. That is going to be the word the. So T, H, E. You can fill that in and all of your other ones as well. Oop. Got ahead of myself. So T, H, E. T, H, E. So because this EWB is also a three-letter word, but because we already had the O from knowing, we know that this cannot be the word V. So then we can use the frequency table. So this is called a frequency table, by the way. I'm not sure if I told you guys that or not, because it shows you the frequency of every letter, how often it appears. So B translates to T. There's eight T's in this puzzle. B translates to T. There's eight. So we can keep filling it in. T right there. There's number two, three. We got number four, five, six, seven, and eight right there. Next letter, we can keep on moving. C, H. C translates to H. There's six of them. So there's one right there. Two, three, four, five, six. Last one is D translates to E. So there are six E's in this puzzle. So one, two, three, four, five, and six right there. Now, if you'll notice anything funny about the K1 alphabet, K1 alphabets always have a keyword. And you'll notice that these letters right here, T-H-E-O, they don't sound like they go together in the alphabet. Like it doesn't go A, B, C, D, T-H-E-O. It goes A, B, C, D, E, and it keeps going. So that shows you, that's a little firework right there, that this could be your keyword. So think of a few words that you know that might start with T-H-E-O. Then we'll see what else we can do while we solve it. So looking right here, you have the word T-H-blank-N. Now you're getting to, you know that a vowel has to go there because all words have vowels in them. So you have T-H-A-N, then, you have T-H-E-N, then, and you have T-H-I-N, thin. You can't have thon or thun because those are just aren't words. But than, then, or thin, those are your three options. And because 
we've already used E right here, and we've already used I right here, we know that we can eliminate those two. So now we're just left with than. So H has to be A. So H translates to A. We can fill that in our table and see that there are two uses of the letter A. Let's find the other one. TH right here. So that's one, two, two uses of the word A. Now it's like a chain reaction. It just keeps on going. You can see that F and then you have a blank and then A T H E blank. But you notice that the blanks are the same. So go through your mind, see if you can figure out what blank A T H E blank is. I think that that word is going to be rather because there are really just not many other words. I don't think there are any words that have the same letter at the beginning and the end that have an A-T-H-E in the middle. So we can go back to our frequency table and see if we've made any progress. So there's a three, F translates to R, and there are three R's in the puzzle. Let's see. Here's the third one. Looking at this right here, you can see that this is probably going to be our keyword. I think that our keyword is going to be theory because you have your keyword right here and then your alphabet starts at A. Unless A is in your keyword, it will start the alphabet all the time. So this is our keyword right here, theory. So now that we know our keyword, we can just fill in the alphabet after that because this is a K1 alphabet. So I don't see a B in our keyword. Let's go ahead and bold the keyword so we remember it. I don't see a B in the keyword, so B. Don't see a C or D. There is an E, so we skip E and go to F, G. There's an H. We have I already. J, K. There's no K. L, M, N. There's an O right here, so we have to skip O. Go to P, Q. There's an R, S, there's a T in the keyword, so we skip T, go to U, and V, and then W, X, there's a Y in the keyword, so we go straight to Z, X, Y, Z. Now we have our entire frequency table in, so we have everything that we need to fill out this aristocrat. So W translates to U, Let's see what else do we need, K, K translates to D. Q translates to L, V to S, L to F, K to D, W to U, and that's it. So the quote by Isaac Asimov, the true delight is in the finding out rather than in the knowing. So this is an example of a question that you could see on your Code Busters test in March. This is an aristocrat using a K1 alphabet. I hope that you guys had fun, as much fun as I did, and I will see you soon.